I want to remind you again, uh, go ahead and get your communion stuff if you haven't done that yet, because at the end of every one of these videos, uh, we have communion together. It's a really important part of what we do. So go ahead and get that ready if you haven't yet. Um, all right, so here's the deal. There's so many different facets to fasting that, um, you know, it's going to be difficult to try to fit them all in. But, but today is really, really cool because it's supernatural, it's otherworldly, and I think it just helps lift us up out of, I don't know, just kind of natural living and natural thinking. And it, it gets us into the realm of, of possibility and into the realm of the supernatural. So, so let me just talk to you about two passages of scripture, really about the same guy, Daniel. In Daniel chapter nine, the nation of Israel has been in captivity and they're coming toward the end of their 70 years of Babylonian captivity and Daniel realizes that. And so he gives himself over to prayer and to fasting because he wants to know what God's up to. So check this out, Daniel chapter nine, verse two. He said, uh, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books of the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that God would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make request by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. I mean, he's just not fasting. He is, he is buffeting his soul. He is seriously crying out to God and sacrificing for the cause. And so he says, and I prayed, made confession, cried out to God, and then he prays this incredible personal and national prayer of repentance. So I would encourage you to, to dive into that and to look at the contents of it. But then when we get down to verse 21 through 23, listen to what happens as a result of him praying, fasting, crying out to God. He said, while I was crying out, speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, I was talking about the angel Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning was caused to fly swiftly. He reached me about the time of the evening offering and he informed me and talked with me and said, oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill and understanding. At the beginning of your supplication or prayer, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved, therefore consider the matter and understand the vision. Do you all get this? Daniel gives himself to serious prayer and fasting, crying out to God, confessing his personal sin, the sin of the nation, and it produces a supernatural release of angelic intervention. God sends the angel Gabriel to answer Daniel's prayer, to give him understanding, to give him skill. And then what follows is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, messianic prophecy in the entirety of scripture. And so I just wanna encourage us this morning, friends. Listen, if you need skill and understanding, you need to know something that God is up to, you've got questions. Listen, when we pray and fast, one of the serious benefits is God releasing. And I'm, I'm not gonna tell you he's gonna send an angel to you. I'm, I'm not gonna tell you he's not. I, I don't know what all God might do and I'm surely not gonna limit him. But I'm just saying there's obviously a supernatural release from heaven when we pray and fast, when we cry out to God, and we wanna know what's on God's heart for us personally or for our nation for that matter. God responded. Now, you could go, well, I don't know, Steve, maybe that's just a one-time thing. No, 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 no. We can go to the very next chapter, Daniel chapter 10, verses two and three. Daniel says, in those days I, Daniel, he was mourning for three full weeks, meaning he was fasting, okay? So then he says, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So this is another three week, a 21 day fast where he's crying out to God and believing God to speak to him because he's got some precedence here. Just, you know, what we call Daniel chapter nine, God's already responded to prayer and fasting. So Daniel gives himself to it all over again. 
And then in verse five, what happens? Daniel said, I lifted my eyes and looked and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold, the gold of Uphaz. And then he just continues there. I would encourage you to read it all about the revelation that this angel gives him as a result of his three-week fast. So friends, listen, I know here in America and in the West in particular, we've become so naturally minded that when it comes to the supernatural, when it comes to the miraculous, when it comes to what God might actually do, we've become kind of dry. We've become kind of doubtful. And I wanted to take this opportunity this morning just to share with all of us that when we give ourselves to prayer and fasting, there can be no limit to the supernatural activity that it can release. So I'm, I'm putting that before you today. We're, we're halfway about through our fast. And if you need to switch gears and, and, and start pursuing God about a certain question you have or what God's will is for your life or something that you need understanding with, I would intentionally read these two chapters, pray them before the God of heaven, and say, Lord, as you responded to Daniel, could you respond to me? Now, I also want to point out to you that Daniel didn't pray this on day one, and the answer came on day one. Daniel prayed and fasted for three weeks, and the answer came. So don't be in such a hurry. Don't think, oh, because it didn't happen yet. Remember from yesterday, God's timing is perfect and miraculous. My point is this. If you're looking for more supernatural revelation and release in your life, I believe the scripture warrants the fact that we can expect it from heaven. Now, of course, beloved, if an angel shows up and starts telling you stuff that isn't in line with the word of God, we will reject it categorically and reject it immediately. If we think we have some revelation that doesn't line up with the heart and the mind and the will of God, of course we're going to reject it immediately. But in the course of us being extremely cautious about supernatural uh, events in our life, let's make sure we don't discard them altogether. It seems like we either fail on one side of this or the other. Supernatural things are happening all the time and it kind of doesn't matter what I think or feel or say, it's all God. But then there's other people that just say, no, God never does any of that. I want to be found to be biblically balanced. I want to be found a person who wants every single thing the scripture says I can have an experience, but nothing more. So friends, let's give ourselves to prayer and fasting, to seeking God, and then let's be open to however and whatever that supernatural release might look like so long as it's in line with the word and the will and the ways of God. So that's my encouragement to you today. Let's prepare our hearts through prayer to partake of communion, and let's believe over the next 11 days as, as we're halfway through the fast that there would be a supernatural release in our lives for questions that we have. So let's pray together this morning, friends. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now, God, that you would so move in our lives over not just the next 11 days, but this would be a pattern for our lives, even as it was in Daniel's life. Praying and fasting in chapter nine, praying and fasting in chapter 10, having supernatural release both times, supernatural revelation about what you were up to. Lord, we wanna pray for these things in and through our lives. God, we want to encounter and experience more of your true and holy supernatural intervention. Father, we reject categorically those things that would come to try to destroy or deceive us. But God, we receive authentically everything that would come from your throne. So Lord, we, we ask for that this morning in the name of Jesus. Now, right now, Father, we prepare our hearts we remember right now your great love, the extravagance of your love that you showed toward us by sending your son Jesus to die in our place so that we could enter into unhindered fellowship and communion with you. Thank you, Lord God, through the broken body and the shed blood of Jesus, 
we're not just accepted into your family, we then become your highly favored children. And so, Lord, we thank you for the precious broken body and shed blood of Jesus that does so much for us. Jesus, we remember you today. We bless you, honor, worship, and love you. We adore you this morning. We commit our hearts to you today. God, have your will and your way in our lives. And again, may there be supernatural release and revelation as we continue to fast and pray and seek your face passionately and genuinely. We love you, Lord. We commit our day and our way to you now. In Jesus' name, and God's happy people said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, let's break the bread together, partake of it. Go ahead, partake of the cup. And let's thank God together. God bless you guys mightily today. May you prosper spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially. May the blessing of God rest on your life. God bless you all. We'll see you real soon.